Good Monday morning to you. Yesterday in worship, we talked about Jesus redefining um, what it means to be family together. And as I had prepared for yesterday's message, I had this colloquial phrase in my mind uh, the entire week, blood is thicker than water. Um, there's a lot of phrases that we use every day in our language, or maybe phrases that have phased out a little bit, but once were common in our language, that actually have biblical roots. When we say that blood is thicker than water, that actually comes from the Bible. It comes from a biblical understanding. The full phrase is the blood of the covenant is thicker than water. That's, that's what we're saying when we use that phrase. Now, it's kind of funny how it's often used. And um, some people love mob movies, right? And so a lot of, uh, a lot of crime movies and mob movies where they have they have gangs and they have commitments to one another. They, they use this idea that um, they share blood, they spill blood with one another, and that's thicker than anything. Um, but if you think of the origins, the origins of the, the phrase, blood is thicker than water, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the womb. And, and that goes right back to this text that we had from Mark 3 yesterday in our worship service. The blood of the covenant is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the promise God made with us. And quite frankly, God has been making promises, covenants with his people since very early in the narrative story. You know, Abraham is the first covenantal relationship that exists in the Bible. And, and how Abraham and every generation that follows lives into that covenant. Now, sometimes when I'm working with um, confirmation students, we have to distinguish what a covenant is. There's a difference between a promise and a covenant. A covenant is a promise that has a, a deeper sacred meaning to it. We make promises to each other all the time. We even make promises to God, although I, I think a lot of our promises to God are more like ultimatums than anything. Um, but, but God makes a covenant with us and with his people. By the blood of this, I will do this. God's covenant never breaks. And, and there's certainly a fair amount of times in the story of the Exodus when the Israelites are wandering in the wilderness for 40 years that God responds, I made my covenant as though they were mine and yet they broke them, right? Um, and, and God uses all sorts of examples of who God wants us to be and how we turn away from that. Um, as though they were my own children, as though they were my wife, as though they were whatever the case may be. Blood is thicker than water reminds us that we are connected. We are deeply connected to the God who loves us. And this God doesn't love us singularly. God loves us communally. And so the blood of the covenant isn't just between me and God. It's between all of us and God. We are bound to one another. We are drawn to each other. After the 11 o'clock service, I was talking with a family, and they were, they were going to be experiencing baptism in their family. And, and I said to one of the little girls, I said, um, I said it's, it's pretty cool because when, when we experience baptism, it's not just about how you're part of God's family. It also means that like we're part of each other's family. And the dad started laughing and the girl's like, that's weird. And uh, in little girl voices, right? Uh, and the dad laughed and says, well, that means you should ask her to borrow her shoes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of how it should be, right? Like this is why the first community in Acts after Jesus ascended to heaven, after the Holy Spirit is poured out to the people who believed, they started living together in a way that was different than how they lived together previously. Sometimes we get this image that they're in a commune and they're sharing everything, and that may or may not be true from Acts 1 and 2. But the reality is that their community was joined together. No one had any need because they just cared for each other. They cared for each other in a deep and powerful way. I hope that we are a reflection of that in our community. I hope that we do care for each other in a deep and powerful way. That doesn't always mean that we know exactly how to help or we can even help. It does mean, however, that we, we desire to. We desire to do what we can to support and care and show love for one another. Because the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Now, the one other thing that we talk about with, blood, with water in our our um, 
our understanding of faith is that of baptism. But you'll remember that John, John, as he's baptizing, he even speaks to Jesus, the one who is more powerful than I will come. He will baptize you with water and with the Spirit and with fire. Um, when we are baptized, although water is the symbolic um, covenantal relationship, the earthly element in that baptism, we are actually baptized with the Holy Spirit. We just don't have that tangible understanding of the Holy Spirit being present. And so we use water as the, the earthly element to make that covenantal relationship secure. So even in our baptism, it's the waters of baptism, but it's really the Holy Spirit at work in each of us. Because the covenantal relationship of blood and the Spirit is greater than that of the water. In, in this case, the water of the womb. We love our families and we love our mothers and we love the institution that God gives us in, in those who are related to us and who care for us. Um, but it's always a good reminder that while we have that, we also have another layer with them and with others that is deeper and, and sacred. It's given to us in a way that is so powerful. So as I think about the scripture yesterday, as I think about Mark 3 and, and Jesus redefining relationships, it doesn't negate the need for our families. You know, sometimes we hear that and we think, okay, Jesus is redefining this, so I don't have to talk to that sibling that I don't really like anyway, and I don't have to deal with this person in my family that always seems to be judging. I would argue that the, the, the need is even deeper. The necessity for us to be in relationship with our family is even deeper because we not only share the water of the womb, but we share the blood of the covenant. We don't get a free pass on anything, do we? Life isn't meant to be uh, just easy and carefree and us allowing us to do whatever makes us happy. Anyway, that's my short Monday lesson for you on water and blood. I was thinking about this particularly because it is a swim meet this afternoon. I have two daughters swimming for South Salem, go Saxons, um, but they're swimming against West, and I know we have families from West, so uh, we're excited for West to do well as well. But no matter how the pool works today, it will be a great visual reminder of how God's covenant, the blood and body of his son, um, all the ways God has promised to bring us to the place that we are today and, and beyond to make us his people and for him to be our God. That's all so much more important and it is what fills us with life and breath. Have a great Monday.